is a demonstration of the Knight T50 transmitter. It was available as a kit in 1958 and sold for $38.95. It's basically a CW rig, but it had provisions for an external AM modulator. It covers 80 through 10 meters. Uh, it can be crystal controlled or VFO controlled. Uh, review comments on eham.net reveals that this radio is prone to official observer reports because of harmonics. Here we have the input for the Morse code key, oscillator tuning. Here you can put in a VFO or a crystal. Here you can choose the meter between grid and plate. This is the band switch, the meter. This is the loading tuning and the amplifier tuning that you would tune for a dip. That's the on-off switch and that's a little pilot light. And this is loading minimum or maximum. In my testing, uh, everything works best on minimum. And to monitor everything over here, I have a MFJ meter with a uh, dummy load built into it. And I'm gonna be monitoring on this receiver. Um, I'm not monitoring on a uh, boat anchor receiver because this is quicker to change frequencies and listen for the harmonics. So basically to tune it up, we'll turn these knobs down to zero. And I got a crystal in there for 7.025. So you want to put this in grid and tune for 4 milliamps of grid current. Well, it says 3 to 4. 3 to 4 milliamps of grid current. So I'm on number 4. And we want to put that in the plate position. And um, this needer bounces around quite a bit. So you want to tune for a dip and then tune, then tune this up. And I don't know how accurate this is because it says to tune for uh, 100 to 110 in the uh, upper scale. So what I do is I look at the meter here and use it more as an antenna tuner. I'll watch the meter. Tune for maximum output, and we're about 55 watts. And real quick, before I go through the other bands, I'll show you the uh, the harmonics. You can hear it on 20, 15, and 10. I'll go back to 20. Put this on 20, turn these down again, tune for 4 milliamps of grid current, the meter sticks once in a while. Put that in plate, I'll go back to here. And we're at about 45 watts. Ah, eh, 50. We're at about 50. Here we are on 15 meters. We've got about 3 mils of grid current there. And we'll bring this back to here. And we got 50 watts of output on 15 meters. Now we're going to go to 10. And I found with 10, the loading does have to be to max. We'll turn these two down. Otherwise, you just can't get more than about 12 watts out. I'll put this on 10 meters. And we'll go to grid. Get about 4 milliamps of grid current here. Yep. Go back here and monitor it. Put this in plate. And we're at 30 watts. On 10 meters. 
So now I'll show you the back of the radio. I'll take this out. Turn it around. Here we have an octal plug with a jumper. That jumper has to be in there for it to operate properly. The power cord and the antenna input connector, which is a PL259. I've seen in reviews they compare this to the Johnson Viking Adventurer, which uh, they say was similar, and uh, but this had an RCA connector for uh, an antenna jack. And I'll just lift up the uh, camera here. You can see the inner workings. So that is the Johnson, not the Johnson, the Knight T50 transmitter. By the way, it does not have a T. It just says 50 watt transmitter, but it's known as the T50. And in later catalogs, I read that they did eventually put T50 in the catalog. This is Paul, Alpha Alpha 1 Sierra Uniform, 7-3. It occurred to me I did not show you the underside of the radio. Here is the, uh, the original filter capacitors and the power supply. Here's the pilot light to tell you that it's on. There's the back side of the crystal socket. There's a fuse. There's the octal socket. Some tube sockets in there and other components. It's all point-to-point -point wiring. It was all kit built. Looks like somebody did a really nice job.